Welcome to Homestead Gardening in the Texas Gulf Coast with Kristen Howard. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how I planted this Hoover Culture raised bed and the evolution it's gone through in nine months of successful decomposition. So today marks nine months since this Hoover Culture raised bed was first planted. And since then, Houston's had a warm winter a hot spring, and a very hot drought summer. If you missed the original episode of me constructing this giant raised bed, you definitely don't want to miss it. And you can find the link in this episode's description. Immediately after constructing the hookah culture mound, I overseeded the entire soil area with seeds. I used a blend of native seeds, herbs, vegetables, and perennial flowers. Both late winter, early spring, and late spring flowers benefit from a little bit of a chill, so planting in November was the perfect time to make sure these seeds would germinate at the appropriate time later on in the seasons to follow. By February, the entire mound was almost completely filled in and the soil was being stabilized. However, it was beginning to become difficult to tell the difference between a weed and a native medicinal plant that was intentionally planted. But because the weeds were still helping to stabilize the soil, they were left alone until March, when it was time to start thinking about summer plantings. In addition to direct sowing warm season vegetable seeds into the hookah culture raised bed, I also added these squash, started earlier in December in the greenhouse. This allowed me to pull competitive weeds nearby and bury them underneath the squash, allowing an opportunity for the squash to start stabilizing the soil, where the weeds were pulled, and allowing the weeds to decompose as part of the hookah culture process. Just three weeks after removing all of the weedy competition, the early spring perennials took off and began blooming. In addition to ground cover greens like red mustard, root vegetables, and snap peas. The hookah culture raised bed welcomed poppies, delphiniums, larkspur, baby blue eyes, scarlet pimpernel, and bachelor's button. By early May, warm season perennials and food producing crops were already taking off. Vegetable plants like beans and corn began popping up around the squash. And the very heat tolerant Indian blanket, lance leaf and plains coreopsis, as well as sunflowers, were a showy addition reminding how very hot it really had become. By late May, early spring perennials had begun to seed out. And the hookah culture raised bed began to show obvious signs of decomposition.
As Houston began to enter a drought in early June, pumpkin vines and squash vines took off, appreciating the lack of rainfall and enjoying the heat. These vines can root into the soil as they crawl across the ground and the Hugelkultur mound was successfully stabilized a little longer. In early July, squash and pumpkin vines began to struggle. Most of the edible plants and vegetables were harvested from the Hugelkultur mound as well as any perennial seeds. The last crops to be harvested included edible sunflowers and pumpkins. Just as everything was getting harvested and vines became stressed, pests began to move in. As all of these plants began to die with the heat of summer and the drought, most of the Hugel culture mound began to collapse. I understand the entire point of doing the Hugel culture method for this raised bed was to allow this whole entire structure to decompose naturally. And I love that it did. However, somehow it didn't occur to me that it might decompose at different times. What we have here is an actual collapse of the mound in a few places. We have some really fantastic decomposition of the larger pieces of the structure, like those larger logs. We also had fast decomposition, of course, of the smaller pieces, like the grasses and leaves. So unfortunately, we will have to repair some of this. We wanna make sure that the mound can continue to decompose these larger components and we will have to cover them up to do that. Once the weather cools for fall, I'll actually have an opportunity to rebuild some of this mound in these areas that have decomposed a little bit faster than I expected. What I can do is I can take materials that I would normally put into my compost pile. Both green and brown compostable materials will work perfectly for this mound. I'll fill from the inside out and then I'll go ahead and top with a nice compost and a little bit of soil just like before and replant and start the process of growing all over again. Thanks so much for learning with me. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. To see the garden growing in real time, you can find me on Instagram. Welcome to Homestead Gardening in the Texas Gulf Coast. Guys, get off the roof, seriously.